Mighty Boar. It's time! Presenting the champion of the world, Bill Bam Bam Ben Amino! Yo, 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 it's your boy Wham Bam, and it's another Wham Bam Wednesday. That's right, baby. And you know what today's all about? It's about poker, baby. Poker. Today we got somebody ordinary who's done something extraordinary who actually finished second in the World Series of Poker. That's right, second. He didn't win it, but he won like 4.3 million. So he did something right. And we're going to talk to him today. But before we do, I got to ask you as always, the show is free. We ask that you simply just do one little thing. Give us a little bit of love. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And when you subscribe, make sure you hit the little alert button and you know you share it, you like it, you do all those cool things. And also, don't forget to go to our website, whambamspodcast.com. That's right. Get some merch. We got the hats, we got the shirts, everything that you wanted, we got for you. So that's about, that, that's there for you. But you know what? Today we got a special guest here, and I'm sitting here at the poker table, and I'm super excited to introduce you to Mr. George the Lights Out Holmes. Is that what it was, George? George, welcome, Something man. Was, was lights out. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Phil. Thanks for being here, man. I really appreciate it. It was George Lights Out Holmes. Was. I was there, was. man. It was crazy. 2021 World Series of Poker, and you're there at the final two people. You got the difference between eight, what is it, 8.2 million or 8.3 million for first place, 4.3 for second. So you know you get yeah. at least, you know you get millions. You're getting, you're working there. We got to talk about that journey a little bit. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But first, you know what, tell a little about, obviously from New Jersey, you've been in, you're a Georgia, Georgia resident since what? Since uh, 99. 99. 1999, I've been in Atlanta. So now what do you do for work? Are you a professional poker player? No, absolutely not. No. Uh, <laughs> recreational player. Um, I've probably been playing in a weekly game since 2000. Yeah. So right after I got here to Atlanta, hooked up with some some coworkers, and we just been playing a weekly game ever since. That's it. Just so is it a weekly cash game? Yep. Now is it high stakes? What kind of what kind of money is in that game? Um, nowadays, back then it was quarters and twenty five cent, fifty cent annies. Yeah. Now, now it's a it's a five ten game. Uh huh. It plays at a at a decent. So, what's the most you ever won in a cash game? Uh, in a cash game, probably six or seven thousand. Six or seven grand. So, what's the most you ever lost? Uh, probably around the same. About the same. Okay. Yeah. So, but you're willing to win as much as you're willing to to, to to lose. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So, you know what? That's a lot different. Knowing that you know you're you're playing a game that you could win or lose six seven thousand. But um, entering the World Series of Poker was it like ten grand to, to enter. To enter, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you know, you got ten thousand dollars. You're taking a risk, you know, yeah. at trying to get to. How many people actually play poker? When you say actually play, what at, do you mean? that year when you were when you were there oh, at the World the Series year, of Poker, how many people um, were actually entered? They set a record this year at ten thousand. Wow. I think the year that I ran deep, it was just maybe seven and a half, close so, to eight thousand people. Yeah. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Now, playing poker stuff, you know, how did you get into poker? Um, like I said, just hooked up with some coworkers back in 99, 2000. Um, we were playing a little quarter 50 cent game um, and just kind of grew from there. So it, you just, it was a friendly game plan. And when did you decide, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to add to the World Series. But did you ever play any other tournaments prior to? No, just some small stakes tournaments, yeah. um, like bar league tournaments. You go, it's free. I mm -hmm. may have paid, played one or two um, $100, $2 tournament, $200 tournaments, yeah. um, but nothing significant. And I don't know, it was probably um, in my current pro poker group, we decided maybe five years ago um, that a bucket list thing would just, we get seven or eight of us to go out there Mm -hmm. hang out playing the world series of poker and just have a good time yeah so what there were no expectations at what's all. what's the longest that you ever played prior to that though i mean you know cash game they're, they're in and out one day right i mean yeah cash game time, you might play five if you're six lucky, hours eight hours eight hours um i could probably play for 24 hours if i had the <laughs> yeah. opportunity to but okay um but yeah, the longest I played maybe at a Vegas cash game was maybe 12 hours. 12 hours. Yeah. So now, obviously, the World Series of Poker was multiple days. Right. And, you know, let's talk about that a little, little bit real quick. How many days exactly was it? Was it seven days for you? 
It you, was it was nine get, days. Nine days to get to the end. Yep. So you're playing nine full days. And what are the days like? Walk, walk us through an average day. Like the first day of the tournament, what was it like? So it's a 12-hour day. Um, you usually start around noon. Um, it may fluctuate, but usually noon, and you'll play till 12.30, 1 a.m. So oh. you're playing a full 12 hours. Well, what happens if you got to go to the bathroom? You get hungry. There, there's breaks in between, like yeah. every, every other level. So you might play for two hours, and then there's a 15-minute break, and then you got an hour break for dinner mm. towards the end of the night. Do they let you rebuy in at the World Series no. Poker? So that's it. One and done. One and done. So there's no way you can re-enter for any period of time. No. That's no. it. And they cut you off after a certain amount. Yeah, you're, you're out, you're out. You're out. Done. Just like that. Yep. So that's got to be a little bit um, nerve-wracking, you know? It is. It is. Um, and, and I like that tournament, especially because it's uh, what they would call deep stack, meaning you, you start with um, 50,000 in chips, oh. but your blinds are 25 and 50. So if you got 50,000 in front of you and your blinds for the first couple rounds is going to be 25 and 50, you got you got a lot to play with. Right. So you got some time and you can kind of be patient, wait it out and kind of play your game. What kind of mental um, you know, mental point, you know, that you have in your head? How many blinds do you really want? Like is that a number? Like do you have something in your head to say, "Hey, I got to have to stay in this and to be around is, is there a certain amount of blinds that you want to keep in your head that, you know, I, I got at least eight blinds, you know, here or 10 blinds? Is there a number? Yeah, I mean, if you, if you listen to, like, people that actually do a lot of tournaments and professionals, I mean, 100 big blinds, 150, 200 big blinds, that's a good number. Oh, yeah. Um, wow, that's a lot. Yeah, but it. I... I don't know. For me, I don't. I don't get into the big blinds game. I just. I kind of set goals in my head for every level and every day, mm. um, and just try to work towards it. But if you fall short, you're fine because again, it's a deep stack tournament, so the blinds mm. don't raise, don't get incredibly high until like day four or five. Yeah. So you can kind of relax, chill out, play your game. It's got to be uh, a little bit exciting and nervous at the same time. If you're sitting there at a table with a pro. I mean, obviously, you, you're not, I mean, you're a pro now, but you weren't a pro, right? Because you're considered a pro now. That no, you, I'm still not a pro. Still not a pro? You no. still don't consider yourself a pro? No, <laughs> no not, a, not at all. Not well, at see, all. that's your humbleness, you know? But yeah. the reality is, for what you went through, you're a pro, man. You know, sure. the, the, I mean, let, let's be honest. What you endured over nine days of constant playing, constant grinding, I mean, I know myself. I play a little poker. I play a little games here and there and stuff. But, you know, you're right. After a, a long session, it drains you. It drains oh, yeah. you mentally. Um, and that's just with friends and family and, you know, people that you know. You're sitting there against some of the greatest people, some some people that have won the World Series of Pokers over the last 20 years, you know, people that do it for a living, like yeah. they play every single day. Um, that's got to gotta be a little nerve-wracking for you. It is. And actually, just, just thinking back to it, it kind of, drains you just thinking about those grueling days hours um it's a rough tournament it's not for the for the faint of heart at all right if you're thinking eight nine possibly ten days of straight 12 hours and there's there's nothing there's nothing um I guess for lack of a better term, is nothing other than playing poker. Like, I love playing poker. Yeah. There's nothing fun about the main event. Yeah. You're in. You're in your seats at, seat at noon. You may get a few breaks every, every other level. But outside of that, you're just at that table. Right. You're at that table for nine straight days. Yeah. It's rough. It's a long day, too. It you is. got people screaming. You got people yelling. <laughs> you got people trying to throw you off. I mean, it's true. Oh, yeah. I mean, at yeah. the end of the day, I mean, people are trying to distract you. People are trying to get to you. Right. Um, right. Did you ever have any players um, that you actually played with prior to the, the final table, of course, that, you know, that were pretty popular, that you kind of that were well known, mm -hmm. that, you know, they kind of try to mess with you a little bit? Yeah, um, probably no one that I could name, but a lot of faces that I would recognize that I've seen on TV and in tournaments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but nothing for like a super extended amount of time. Yeah. Um, in the world series, they always kind of move you around and reshuffle the tables. Um, so how I, often I, does that happen? I do um, notice that a lot, but how, how often? Maybe, maybe the first day or two it's less frequent. 
but after that, I mean, they're, they, you, you may get moved every three or four hours. Now, does that kind of bother you a little bit? Because isn't it true when you're playing? I mean, you get a rhythm going, yeah. and you kind of know the people that you're playing. I mean, you got to read the people, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not all about the cards. I mean, of course, you got to have a little luck with the cards. But, I mean, what is your theory on it? Is it the cards or is it the game? No, it's a, it's a little of both, for sure. I mean, there's, there's, there's a ton of luck involved. Um, but it's also the cards you get, and it's the feel of the table. I mean, you're 100% right. Some tables, I mean, you get moved to some tables, you're like, Jesus Christ, this is, this is a rough table. <laughs> right. um, or it's, you got to start over. That's, you, that's the thing. You, you would think you, you got to start over. You, you had a few reads back, on a few you people. You understand who you're playing with, and it, it, it gets tough. It gets tough. Especially, I mean, if, if you're all starting at a table together, that's one thing. But if the table's already there, and it's it's eight or nine guys, eight guys at the table, and you're sitting down as the ninth one, um, and you're new to the table, then yeah, it could be tough. Right. So you gotta you gotta kind of ebb and, and flow. How do you tell a good poker player? Um. When you come to a table, you see a bunch of people. What's the first thing you look for? Um. Probably just their style of play. Yeah. Um. Especially if you get the more hands you get to see. Um, the more you can kind of understand how they play, what they try to do, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't see their hands, um, like a lot of people just win by betting. People fold and they muck their hand. You don't get to see what they were playing, how right. they were playing. Um, then that may be a little bit more difficult. But outside of that, it's just kind of sitting back. Being you ever patient. show your cards when you don't um, have to? Have you Occasionally, ever, yeah. Have you? Yeah. So you use that as part of your as part strategy. of the strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, depending, you want to show, hey, I'm folding a strong hand to you. Right. Um, I'm giving you respect, um, or you want to show a bluff, um, because they think you're tight. Right. You may want to, hey, I'm not as tight as you think I am. Um, it just depends. I try not to um, very frequently because, especially the pros. I mean, those guys, they, they pick up on any sort of tell you give. So I try not to show those guys much of anything. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I know there was a couple of days that you were in there that you were kind of short stacked, right? What's it like when you're short stacked? You walk into a table and you got somebody, you know, who's trying to bully the short stack out, right? Yeah, I mean, that yeah. happens, you know. It, it does. Um, I don't know. I kind of, it's hard to explain. So. For me, being short stacked, it's kind of less stress. You you, you, you got a couple of options. Yeah. You're either pushing or you're folding. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes that could be an advantage, uh, especially, I mean, it depends on if you're super short or if you're mid-range or, or, or how short you are, um, but it could be an advantage. And, and for me, again, I'm not a pro and I'm just, I'm really a cash game guy. Um, pros don't like, and it's one thing I learned Pros don't like to be at risk in a tournament, in a big tournament. Oh, yeah? That's one thing they pride themselves on is not to be at risk. Mm -hmm. um, and that was one of the things that um, I think I was able to um, take advantage of. Yeah. Um, so you saw some of the bluffs and things that I was doing. Um, yeah, but you're super patient, man. Yeah. That's the one, th the one I mean, thing that really, you know, which I've known you for years. So knowing how you are as a person, you're very calm. You're very, I mean, well, you worked in customer service for many, you've been in the credit card industry yeah, for yeah. a long time. So, you know, you're dealing with people and you're, def you know, diffusing the problem. You're, you're analyzing the situation. Sure. You're finding a solution, you know, and you're doing the same at the poker table. Oh yeah. You know, but, oh, yeah. uh, the reality is you never really got frazzled. You know, and, and that's a that's a skill in itself. Not everybody has that, George. Sure. You know, sure. I mean, that's a that's a reality of it. Uh, you go to a table and you got somebody that's got big stacks and, you know, yeah, you say, you know, you can either go all in or you're going to fold. But sometimes that forces people to go all in yeah. when they should have folded and lived for another day, lived for that next pot, live, live for that next round of cards. You know what I mean? Yeah. And unfortunately, you know, that doesn't and you see a lot of times people overact. Because they're like, ah, screw it. This is all I got. Let me let's see if this hits. It's you know I got a jack nine or I got a, I'm, I'm gonna go for it. You know type of thing or a small pair. Yeah, you yeah. know type of thing. And unfortunately, sometimes it comes ahead, but most of the time it doesn't. You know. Yeah, and I think I think especially in the main event, 
to your point because it's 10k mm -hmm. um it's not easy to get into it's not cheap right um you'll get a lot of the the non-pros the the rookies that'll do things like that mm -hmm. um pros just don't don't want to put themselves at risk because pros pay the play the long game they right. think okay um i may have second or third best hand but if he has the nuts i'm out so or i'm down a bunch i'm gonna lay it down and live to play another day because the long game for them is that i believe i'm better at poker than these non-professionals and i can outplay them right what's the what's the best hand you ever had that you actually folded i mean because let's be honest in position sometimes you know, you got two people, they're all in, they're all in, you know, they're, they're fighting each other and you kind of like, mm, I could take that too, but eh, maybe I should go ahead and, and, and muck this and live for the next, let, let them two beat each other up a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Is uh, that, a, that happened to you? Sure. Sure. Um, I think pre-flop the best hand that I folded were, um, pocket jacks, pocket jacks. Yeah. And that, that's because it was exactly as you said, it was, I'm sitting here with jacks and then you've got a raise and a re-raise what are my jacks going to do there right right so i think i think that's an for me an easy fold yeah what's your what's the first thing you look for when you when you look at people obviously we talked about that you know you look at demeanor you look at how many chips they have but what, what's really in the back of your mind like you know you, you get a set of cards you know you get an ace queen you get ace jack you are you pretty much when you get an ace are you pretty much in the game Nah. No, maybe I don't even like ace ten, ace jack. Yeah. If it's ace queen, ace king, um, they're dangerous. And, and, hands. It, and it depends on position. If I'm last to act and it's just been one raise or checked around, then I may join the party. If it's ace ten, ace jack. But uh -huh. if it's, if there's a raise, call, call, and I've got ace ten, right. Depending on the situation, I may fold. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Um, do you enjoy the the tension that it comes with in the game? I mean, it is very yeah. strategic, yeah. you know, and you got to have a little bit of enjoyment for it. I know it's stressful, oh, yeah. but I know at the end of the day, you're like, Phew, I made it day three, <laughs> you know, I'm at day four. <laughs> now, that, and that's probably what I love most about it is just the strategy behind it. And um, there's so many nuances to the game. And if you're in a tournament, nuances to the tournament and like, where are you money wise and the scale and and what place are you currently in so when you think back to like um final table was day nine how many did they pay to though top what oh um they, they, they play they paid out day three end of day or day three um I don't remember the number gotcha I don't remember but the that, so that's really was that your first goal like going in saying hey i just want to try to recuperate my money so i i um i played in that was 21 i played in 19 mm -hmm. 2019 and i came in 213 that year okay so my goal plan in 21 20 they canceled because of COVID. 21 right. my goal was hey can i top 213? 213 and when you're in 213 did you get paid for anything there yeah, it was uh, right around fifty thousand. Fifty grand, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. so you so you made you made money. Oh yeah. So yeah. You, so you had five years worth of, you know, ten grand, you know, logins <laughs> yeah. for free logins, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I guess you that had to feel good. It did. Oh yeah, it was. Uh, it was awesome. So describe the feeling between that year, okay, making the fifty thousand versus twenty, you know, twenty one. You know, what was the feeling like that was different? I think the year that I came in 213, I was like, and that was my first year. Uh -huh. um, I think I was just like, I, don't, I, I remember very little about that year. Yeah. Um, except for the day, I think I went out day four maybe. Um, and I played at some very, very tough tables, or at least at the time I, I, I took them as very tough tables, tough mm -hmm. opponents. Now, when you say tough, what, what do you classify as tough? Um, just their style of play. I mean, there was a lot of raise, re-raise um, before it even gets to you. Gotcha. Or if you raise, somebody's re-raising on top of you. And it was like that at that year, 
that final day I played at two tables where it was like that nonstop. Mm. So it was almost like you just getting gobbled up and you weren't sure if to play or not yeah, play. Yeah, and you just you're trying I, to survive. I was in over my head. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it felt like that year. Yeah. Um, but in 2021, it just it it seemed, and there was something weird about that year too. And I tell my friends, and I told them at the time, um, even like day three, day four, like it just feels like good. Yeah. Like something's good. Something good's gonna happen. Did you? So you felt that? So you knew. You were doing something. You felt like you were on a on a little bit of a run. Yeah, it's hard to explain, but it just felt something. Felt like starting day three and four just felt weird. Yeah, like things are things are going well. Uh huh. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Um, because not everybody feels that way. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and uh, again, there were a couple times where you almost go. You were all in, right? A few times. How many yeah. times were you all in that year? Uh, ooh. Probably too many to count, but uh, at least early on and prior to like day seven, eight, I may have been in four or five times, all huh. in four or five times. And you came ahead, obviously. Yeah. So yeah. did you ever go all in and lose, but you had you had still had a little bit more chips to back you up? No. What funny story is, and they didn't really um, air this very well, um, day seven, I was doing well day seven. Um, and then I got hit with a couple big hands and then I think I may have been down to like 4 million. And at, at the time I may have started the day with like 10, I was mm -hmm. down to 4 million. Um, and one of the guys at the final table, um, he goes all in, um, for like three and a half million. I've got 4 million. No, he, he raised, he, he raised, I re-raised him. He shoves all in. So mm -hmm. at that point, I had to go all in. Right. So I had a half a million left. He had ace king. I had king queen. He wins. Mm -hmm. So I'm like getting up from the table. I'm putting my backpack on. Thought it was over. And they're like, you know, you got you got a few more chips left. So I'm like, all right, all right, this is this is about to be done. <laughs> um, so very next hand, I get nine. I've got nine six six nine. Uh huh. And it's suited all or unsuited? Unsuited. Unsuited. Okay. It folds all the way around. Then there's a, there's a, there's a call, and then the big blind called, um, and then I shoved. Mm -hmm. Fold. He calls. No, well, actually, both of them call. So I'm like, all right, I'm great. Go home. Okay. <laughs> um, flop comes six nine. Oh, just like that. Sixty nine, so, baby. So yep. <laughs> so the hand held up. So I I tripled up. I had a million and a half at that point. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, I, I'm I'm still got a few blinds. Yeah, I'm still uh, <laughs> not in a hundred blinds. You got a hundred blinds. Shape. Yeah. So as soon as that happens, one of the uh, tournament directors comes over and he's like, George, we got to move you. So I'm like, geez, I'm you just move got... me to another table. <laughs> I got a million and a half. I'm almost. Go I'm, I'm I'm about to go home. So why move me? <laughs> Um, but needless to say, when they moved me to that table, I went on like a incredible run for like an hour and a half. Uh -huh. And um, within an hour and a half, I was up to like 17, 18 million. Wow. Um, and I, at that table, I'd gone in a lot, uh -huh. a lot that table. Um, but yeah, it was just a, that kept a you alive. crazy run. Yeah, <laughs> a crazy run. And then uh, day seven... After that run, I got moved to another table on a TV table. Um, what was that like? First time knowing you're on TV, you know, like the whole it's world. It's a little nerve you. wracking. It's a little nerve wracking, um, especially the fact that now people are seeing your cards. Mm -hmm. um, so they know how you're playing. Yeah. So it's delayed an hour. So an hour later, they're gonna know. Oh, what's gonna ha yeah. what's happening? Okay. You, you were bluffing. So right? does that happen? Like, do they do that? Yeah. I never close, thought about that. See, I didn't close. know they really aired it like that. I, I figured it was taped, and after it was over, then they aired it. So that's live. It's an hour, it's an hour difference. Delayed. That's yep, crazy. And the, and the, so, the so the next day, so the next day, you literally can know what the person did the day before. Yeah, you'll know the same day. The same day. Because I'll tell you what, the pros, I mean, they have teams to watch out that. there that are watching that, taking notes, and they're sharing that information during the breaks. Did you ever gain that information? No. No, I had, I mean, I'd have people from, that year I had people from home texting me, hey, he did this an hour ago, just be careful, but right. 
I mean, you're not going to see Texas that much during the tournament. So. Right. But, yeah, it's nothing like with some of these guys. They've got, they've got a whole crew out there. Statistics and everything. They're sitting there calculating the odds and all that. 100%. Wow, that's great. I wonder why they haven't kind of managed that a little bit better. Um, it's, or maybe it's they just made edge. it part of the game. Yeah, it is. It's, it part it's, of the it's game. an edge if, if, if they want to do it. I mean, that's, I don't know how much. I mean, I'm sure it's, it's, a, it's a slight edge. How much poker know. did you watch prior to you playing? In the World Series of Poker, like was that is that something you ever watched on TV quite a bit? Oh, or no? yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, did you ever um, study anybody? Like, who's your favorite poker player? Um, probably Negreanu and and Ivy. Yeah. yeah. Why? Um, Ivy's a big mouth, right? Just because. Now, Ivy's kind of tame. Ivy's tame. Yeah. Not he, you might be thinking of Helmuth. Well, Helmuth definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Phil is definitely is going to say a few words. But yeah. the, those two, I just like how they're. Uh, yeah, I, Ivy. But I guess when I say that, I guess most of the time when I'm when I'm seeing him, you're right. It's interviews. So he'll uh, yeah. if he's upset at somebody or something happened or whatever, he's talking like that. But you're right; he doesn't talk much on the table. Yeah, but, but they they have pretty good um, intuition. Yeah. Um. So they can read people pretty well, which is I, which I find fascinating. Do you ever study any of that? Um. A little bit. Um, I think the most studying I did probably was in 20, before I played the very first year. Uh-huh. Um, I think Negranu had like a master class and Phil Ivey had um, another video or something that I watched. Um, and of course, I've read all the books over the years. But um, well, So it's something that you really have a passion for, something sure, you've studied sure. quite a bit. So, sure. so you feel like any of those tricks or anything that you, that you read or learned, did, did you feel like you applied any of that stuff? The year you were uh, nothing in the final? specific, but I'm sure I'm sure the answer is yes. Yeah, nothing that I could kind of pinpoint because I'm not a big stats guy and um, um, like your odds and all that stuff. I don't get into much of it, but just by osmosis, I'm sure over the years I'm kind of just put that stuff together and kind of work that into my everyday game. So was Phil Ivy in the World Series of Poker the year that you were at the final table? Yeah, I think he's he's in it pretty much every year. So, so what's that like though? You know, knowing there's your there's somebody who you look up to, you know, you learn from. He's your idol when it comes to poker. Yeah, and he's gone. You're still playing. How's that feel? <laughs> I don't. I, I tell you with a grain of salt because those guys. I mean, they're in it to. They're either in it to, especially the Ivies and the Granus. They want to come out of day two with a lot of chips. Yeah. If they don't they're probably gonna go just because it's not worth their time. What's up guys, Monster Michael Todd here and I'm the Cost Plus Processing, the leader in merchant processing. If you're a business owner and you're still paying processing fees, you have to contact Cost Plus Processing. 1-855-391-9190. That's 1-855-391-9190. Be sure to tell them Monster sent you get a free gift. You know, well, in, talking about all this experience is, you know, leads up to obviously you getting to the final table. You know, you're there, you know, with with another guy, and now it's you're pretty pretty comparative in chips at the time. You, mm-hmm. you have you know a couple hundred million chips that you're you know sitting in front of you. Um, what 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 is that like? Because you know you're you're playing a cash game. You're playing with dollars. You know, you got chips. You're playing with hundreds, probably. Yeah. You know, I don't think you're, you probably don't even have a thousand dollar chips, do you? There, I don't know. Maybe you do. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so what? What's the most denomination chip that you you play with prior to the tournament? Highest denomination, probably probably a five thousand dollar chip. Five thousand. So, yeah. you know, here you got you know hundreds, thousands. Yeah, you got millions of chips. You know, and stuff. Is that a little intimidating? Because you know, looking at stacks and different color chips and understanding where everybody is. Um, you know, people bet, are you, are you, there's betting patterns, you know, are, are you a three bet person? What, what, what kind of better are you? Um, yeah, definitely three bet. Um, probably more that year than I've ever, ever done. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you just kind of, and, and I learned a lot that year. I mean, it was, it was a deep run for me, but I learned more, probably more about poker that tournament than at any other point in my however many years I've been playing. Let's talk about that. What'd you learn? Give us three bullet points that you learned. Something um, you learned. Just uh, aggression. Yeah. Aggression wins. Um, Being more aggressive. Yeah. 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 
Um, because, I mean, you don't always have it in poker. You know that. Right. I mean, there's bluffing and, and continuation bets. And mm -hmm. if, 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 if your opponent doesn't have it and you show some aggression, they usually got to go away. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the things that I learned. And, again, it goes back to, especially with a lot of the pros, they're risk averse in these tournaments. They're mm -hmm. like, all right, he may have it. I'm going to lay it down, but I can probably outplay him over the next – however hour. many hours or whatever right um so a little of that it's, it's all timing too that's why I, I i mean trust me it's there's a lot of luck involved mm. if you've seen some of those hands that i was able to get <laughs> out of there's a lot of luck involved um but yeah probably the biggest thing was aggression that year yeah. for me um yep so winning you know and when i say winning i know you didn't win a tournament was that disappointing because you didn't win the tournament? Or were you excited that, hell, I won $4.3 million? No, great, great question. <laughs> I, I still ask myself that. Yeah. Um, I mean, would you give the money up to win it? No. No? Okay. No. Okay. Because um, to be honest, um, I wouldn't be a great ambassador for poker. So I think it happened the way it should have. So if I would have won, yeah, I would have made double the money. Um, but I would have also been expected to now play in all the tournaments, mm. go on these TV tours and things like that, which I, I wasn't going to do. Yeah. Um, I so bet I you they asked you, though. Yeah, there were, there were, there were some asks. Were there any requirements, though? No. Like, hey, like, you know, we expect you to be in these two tournaments? No. Okay, no. so... So uh, I, you, you pay your money, you're in, and you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, th I think it happened the way it should have. Um, but I, I do imagine, like, what it would have been like if I had won that. Um, the biggest disappointment in, in not winning it is, like, so many people after that tournament, even the people, like, the, the crew working the, the tournament and the TV. Right. They were like, man, you... You don't know, but we've like been pulling for you. We've been watching your face. We know your face <laughs> over the past week. We've been watching. Well, you it depends. It, it depends. You get a lot of this. So, <laughs> yeah. you know. I, I don't know. <laughs> don't know about. They're like, we were pulling for you and just people would walk up to me and it was just like, it would have been cool to win it for yeah. the folks that were rooting for me. Yeah. I th listen. I think a lot of America was rooting for you. Yeah. I mean, you're the underdog. I mean, you were the rock. It was the Rocky moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. And even though, and Rocky didn't win them all, you know, but even <laughs> yeah. though you fell a little bit short, yeah. you still really made a huge impact on the world because you show that just some average guy can go in there who plays a cash game poker once a week, you know? Yeah. You read a few books, you did a little studying, but you never really plan on going nine days, yeah. you know, it's sun up to sun down. I mean, because I can't imagine you're sleeping much either. No. You know, when you're in the room, you got to be, the adrenaline's got to be rushing. Vegas, coming from uh, East Coast time, I may have been sleeping three or four hours a night. Yeah. It was rough. Yeah. And then you got everybody calling you. You got your friends there. And, you know, you're just like, wow, is this really happening? <laughs> you know, do, you know, but you, you always kept your cool. I, you know, I, I, most people, I think, would have kind of folded a lot sooner because you get to that appointment where, that point where you're like, hmm. I actually got a shot at this. Yeah. When did you know that? And you said you kind of felt it good in day three and four, but when did you really know that? Hmm, I actually got a legitimate shot at, yeah. at, at being at the final table. It was it was that same day seven I was telling you about where I went down hard and came back, had the good run. Um, I think I ended day seven. Um, we ended day seven with 30 people, and I think I had, I forget the amount, but I was probably middle of the road, like in 15th place. Mm. Um, my goal there was just to kind of play snug, try to chip away, get some people out, and just kind of level up and mm -hmm. level up. Um, and I think at the end of day seven, I started thinking like, man, if I can, I just, my goal then was to get to the final table. Yeah. Um, and then when you, you, you hit that goal, the goal from there is like, 
let's get some people out. Let's let's level up. Right. Um, so you, your game had to change. Like it had to be very strategic because you don't you're not the chip leader. Right. So you gotta you gotta be careful. Um, and there was a lot of just sitting patience, no crazy bluffs, no, none of the stuff you saw early on in the tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it got really boring mm-hmm. day eight. Yeah. Day eight was very, very boring. It was a lot of just kind of waiting around, picking your spots. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it worked out. It takes patience, man. It takes yeah. patience for that. You know, I mean, obviously you're chasing chips the whole time. Mm-hmm. Now, it wasn't until you got to the final table that I think you actually were a chip leader. Yes. When you first became the first. Briefly. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> but, but when that happened, when you actually became chip leader, did anything change with you? Did anything, it was that feeling of, okay, now I'm the boss. Now, no. I can, now, now I can drive this a little bit more. No, because when, when I became chip leader, again, it was briefly, but it was heads up. Mm-hmm. It was, yes. It was, it was just the two of us at that point. I may have out chipped him by by a couple million. So mm-hmm. it may have been like 150 million to 145. Which was probably a blind at that time, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it wasn't anything, um, it wasn't anything crazy. My mindset didn't change. And at the time, I may not have even known I was the chip leader just because, like you said, there's just mounds of chips sitting in front of you. Um, but that's probably, like, heads up is hard. Mm-hmm. I learned that heads up is a different, different game. Right. And I had no experience heads up. Um, but you didn't back down. No. no <laughs> you didn't back no, down. It was, it was fun. It was exhausting. Uh, um, I was I was happy when it was over. Now, how uh, long is heads up? Like, how long could that have gone? Could it have gone 10, 11 days? Uh, prob- no. No, because the blinds would increase. And um, no, worst case would have been because they were... I think when we went heads up, it was maybe nine o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think they said um, we were going to play until 11. If we were still both heads up at 11, then we would just continue the next day. But it would have definitely been over early in the next day if we would have, if it would have made it that long. Yeah. Now, did you change? Are you superstitious at all? Did you change any of your routines? Or are you the guy that woke up? It's like, oh, I drink a cup of coffee or I have a Red Bull. What's your routine like? My, my only superstition that year was getting up and having eggs for breakfast. Eggs was it? Yeah, eggs was it. How was it? it was scrambled? Weird. Scrambled. Sunny, scrambled, yeah. like scrambled eggs? Yeah. That, was, <laughs> that, that was the only weird thing that year. Was, uh, <laughs> what did that give eggs. you? What did that provide you? Uh, I don't know. It was just the kind of the 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 normalcy of it. Um, like I said, I was getting, I had these good feelings, these good vibes, and the only thing that I could see that I was consistently doing was that breakfast in the morning. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna keep doing it. All right. I'm keep uh, having eggs for breakfast. How do you feel about the people that you know? Some people wearing sunglasses. Some people got the hats low. They don't want you to see. Uh, the hoodies up, the distractions, you know, how do you feel about all that? Um, I, I obviously don't do it. Um, yeah. And this year was, was, uh, or, or since COVID it's been worse. You got people that put the Mask, gators yeah. on and have the whole thing wrapped around their eyes just showing. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, more power to them if yeah. they want to do it. Um, that's just not my thing. Does it affect you though? If you're a guy trying to read them or you, you know, you're trying to, um, yeah, you're probably not picking up much if they've got their whole face covered and sunglasses on or anything like that. Um, See, to me, I would think that perhaps it's actually better because now when they do make an alteration in their in their move or their behavior or what they're doing, it's going to show more. Pick up. You can, you know, what I'm saying, like, yeah, okay, you're not going to see them smile or grin or all that. You're not going to see a face. Yeah, you're not going to see their eyes blink and all that. You're not going to see which way they're looking, but their demeanor and their movement becomes sure. more obvious. Sure. You know, so I, I think there is a little bit of a. There may be some truth to that. You know, I don't know. I just don't like. I'm not the guy that's like, just like staring at them the whole time. You never did that. You never. No. What about somebody doing that to you? Everybody's least like, look at you, like. It it used to be, it used to be intimidating. Like maybe the first year when you're playing back at somebody and they got glasses on, like grilling you. Uh huh. Um, it could be a little intimidating because you're kind of 
trying to watch your demeanor and making sure you're not giving anything away. Um, but now, I don't know. It, yeah. No difference. No difference. Um, so does it eat at you, George? I got to, I know you're a competitor. I, I, I know you're a humble guy, yeah. but the fact that, you know what, you were this close, this close. Do you see yourself going back? Do you see yourself at that final table? Do you see yourself walking away with that bracelet? Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to. The, the odds of that are probably slim, but I'd love to. It's not the odds. I mean, I've, I've played yeah. two years since. Um, of course, trying to get back. Um, it hasn't happened yet, but I'll, I'll probably still continue to play that tournament. It's a great tournament. Yeah. It's well, actually, tournament. get another guy from Alpharetta won this year, right? 2023. Yes. Yep. So another Georgia guy, you know, living over there in Alpharetta, won it all. And it was actually the biggest one. And he won, like, he won $12 million, I think, right? He won $12 million, and it was the largest uh, participants, uh, largest number of participants this year. It was just over 10,000. So sports growing. So oh, it's yeah. growing, growing. Oh, yeah. Now, how do you feel about the online poker stuff? You know, do you play any online poker at all? I, I, I used to. So back in 2000, early 2000s, when there was the online boom, I played. Um, but then when they shut it down, I stopped. And it was probably a blessing. I mean, I was playing a lot online. Yeah. Um, probably a couple hours a night online. So that was probably a good thing. And now you can't play it online in Georgia anyway. Right. Not for, not for money. Right. You're in Vegas or you got to be in a New city. Jersey. Yeah, you got to be in a city where there's gambling available. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 great practice because I mean it's it's all about you know baseball. It's all about at bats. Right. You get at bats. That's true. experience. That's practice. Yep. Um, where online you could play in any given night thousands of hands. Right. Um, I always have a hard time though online. I just, I feel like I got to see the person. I got to see the money. I want to, I want to see who's on the other side of the computer yeah, yeah. because I, I don't know. I'm not saying the computer's taking my money and you know, it's, it's not real, but it could not be real. There's, there's, you know what I'm saying? Some of, there's some of that. that <laughs> you know what I mean? Happens. Like, you know, so you worry about that. Now I know there's larger websites like the world series of poker. Yeah. They have it and you can enter, actually enter in and actually win a stake to get into yeah, the world see, series poker yeah. and stuff. And, um, you know, but again, that's a, it's a grind and it's hard and, you, and it's it's different. It's a different get play than if you're sitting there in front of people. Yeah. And unfortunately, if you even want a spot online, you have to belly up and go to the table and start looking at, at folks. And it's a different game. <laughs> Don't you agree? Totally, totally different game. Um, yeah, and that's probably why I, I, I mean, I just I'm not a big tournament guy to begin with. The main event's the only tournament I really play. Um, for me, it's. It's all about the cash game. Yeah. It's all about the cash game. And, it, and for me, because I play with a group of guys that I play with regularly, it's, it's also the, just the camaraderie. Mm -hmm. Sure. And that's always good to chop it up with the guys. Oh, and, yeah. Uh -huh. You know, have, have that one night a week that you're able to do that. Uh, that had to been super exciting. And I know it was for, for your crew because oh, yeah. they, they were there and, uh, you know, shoot, they had the shirts made. They were all supporting <laughs> and, uh, you know, what a bunch of fun, fun group of guys. And, and, you know, did you ever feel like, oh, man, you know, it, did any of them kind of get it? You said it should have been me. Like, I'm a better player than you, George. Nah. I can't believe I got knocked out. And, you yeah. know. <laughs> no, it's, it's a good group of guys. And they probably had more fun than me. Yeah. Because um, uh, <laughs> it wasn't fun sitting at that table playing, especially at that point. Um, so what was it like tonight? You you won. You, you finished. You're over. It's over. But you got $4.3 million. Yeah. What was that night like? Was it, you know, was that a party that night or what? What happened that night? Let's, let's talk about that. I was. Um, we went out, we celebrated, uh, we ended up at, uh, what's the room up in Mandalay? Mandalay. Oh yeah. The at, up there at the top. Uh -huh. um, so we spent a few hours up there, had some drinks, cigars, and just hung out and tried to unwind a little bit. <laughs> um, now did they pay you out right there too? They did. They yeah. did. So I mean, just like you walked other, away, you had to go to the, to the, to cage? the cage, um, Fill out some information, some tax information. They're like, do you want cash, chips, or a check? You just say, I want stacks. I want stacks, <laughs> baby. Bring me the like, money. I'm like, no cash, please. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty crazy. Like, But they were willing to give you cash if you want it. Yeah. How's that changed you? Um, not, a, not a whole lot. Um, like I said, I'm still working. Yeah. I love what I do. I love the industry. I mean, you know it. You're in it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's so fluid. 
dynamic. It's always changing. Um, hasn't changed much. Yeah. What's the first purchase you made, though? Uh, first purchase. I was, hope you did something for your wife. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I bought, I brought her, actually, I brought her a, uh, a purse in Vegas before I won. Okay. So I got some. Uh, Were you already in the money, though? Was that why? Or did, um, you, did you do it, you know? No, it was, you really... it was before the money. Okay, it was okay. before the money. So See, I... so, so, you know, you, you, you really did something special for yeah, her then. Yeah, okay. so it was, uh, I got some, some points for that. Um, I think we once I won, though, I think we traded that in and got a, l- a little better bag at that point. <laughs> um, so she got a she got a purse. Uh, we went on a trip um, with the kids shortly after that. Um, the, Where'd you go? Uh, Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. Nice. What part? Um, where are we? Just north of uh, of um, Cancun. Okay. I forget the name of the area. Yeah. Very nice resort. Um, we did that, and I bought the the Escalade that I have out there. Uh huh. Nice. Um, that's it. You yeah. mentioned you mentioned Destin earlier. Yeah. Um, I bought a place there. Nice. So we got a place in Destin now. Good. But Good yeah. for you. Good for you. That's awesome. Um, you know that doesn't surprise me, being the humble guy that you are. You know, doing that, but it's got to be hard now. Is, do you notice that you find yourself having a few more people around you that want to be friends? Or people come at you wanting donations more, or come to this tournament and be in this. I mean, how, how does that go? Because listen, the the reality is you are a celebrity, and you became a celebrity. I know that I know watching you walk around, people were getting autographs, and you know you are you know you being recognized. Sure. You know what what is what is that like? Um, it hasn't been too bad. I think um, like just out on the street, I don't get recognized. But any any poker room I go to, yeah, yeah, they they recognize me. If I go to Vegas, Cherokee, any of the other poker rooms, um, inevitably there's somebody there that'll recognize me. Um, but just average day out on the street, no, nah, no, nah. nah. pretty pretty now, tame. Growing up, you grew up in New Jersey, right? Mm-hmm. So as a kid. When would you remember playing your first poker game? What it was like, and I mean, is it something your dad do or your mom do? I mean, did no, I, I never played poker until I moved to Atlanta. Yeah, like I said, um, once I started, once I moved to Atlanta, some co workers invited me to a game, um, and I think I lost for the sh- <laughs> straight month or two months that I started playing. See, you I said, wait, wait there's a, a key. You said two months, I mean, you didn't quit, you no, didn't give no, up. No. <laughs> No, I think I love to gamble too much. <laughs> I remember in the early days, I would have one of the you know the cards that come in that shows you uh, a four of a kind beats. Yes, a, yes, a yeah, the cheat sheets. And, yeah, yeah. I, I remember playing with one of those back in the day. Uh-huh. Yeah. How old were you then? Uh, this was about thirty. About thirty. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're you're older then for sure. Yeah. yeah. So it's not something you tried as it a was child. Late. Yeah, yeah, it was late. It wasn't early on. Um, but just being in New Jersey, I mean, Atlantic City, um, I did a lot of craps, did you? roulette, blackjack, yeah. never poker, though. What's your favorite game? Probably craps. Even today? Um, out, outside of poker. Yeah. You know, oh, that's what I'm saying. Poker's it's one. Is it? Is it definitely one? Yes. No matter what, it's one. Not yeah. because you finished, in the, but it's no, one. No, I just love playing okay. poker. Okay. All right. Because poker takes a lot of time. It does. You know, it, it takes does. a lot of time, a lot of energy out of you. So, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, I love the game, man. I could, like I said, I could sit down and play for hours uh-huh. um, if I were afforded the time. But And if you didn't play poker, what would be your next? Um, Probably something more athletics. Yeah. Uh, tennis. And the pickleball now. Pickleball. I love uh, pickleball. Yeah. Um, That's my jam now. That's yeah. my new jam for us old people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but make stress, no mistake. It is. Joints. But make no mistake. It's a workout, man. It's a workout. Well, I get sweating. Good, Stop and go and move in. Yeah. It's fun, though. <laughs> yeah. It's very, very fun. I like it a lot. Yeah. That's cool. Um, Poker-wise, obviously gambling. You enjoy gambling. You enjoy blackjack, craps. When you go out and play. Do you have a rule when you play when you were gambling prior to be playing you know, poker? Let's let's talk about craps or blackjack mm-hmm. um, when you're sitting at a table because a lot of viewers go out there and you know they, everybody wants to win, right? Everybody wants to make money, 
you know, but unfortunately, if that was the case, the casinos wouldn't be open. Yeah, and, and, and sometimes people don't realize that. And, you know, do you have a strategy when you do any of those other games like you do in poker? Because poker, you definitely have to have a strategy to, sure. to, to, to last out and everything else. But the sure. nice thing is you can get up and leave. Yeah. But um, a lot of people have a hard time doing that because they're always chasing, chasing, chasing. Yeah, that's that's the tough part. and You hate to see that. Um, fortunately I've never, like, I like to gamble, but I'm not a big, big gambler. Yeah. Um, like I know people that could sit down with 10 K 15, 20 K at a blackjack table. That's, right. I'm not doing that. Gotcha. Yeah. I may sit down with a couple thousand. Mm -hmm. Um, I love outside of poker. I love craps, but craps is a tough game. Mm -hmm. You can lose money fast in craps. See, I don't like crap cause you, you got to rely on somebody else rolling the dice. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> That's the thing. it's just a, a very exciting game. And I think I got hooked years ago. My very first time in Vegas, um, played craps. And it was just, it was a female on the table. She was rolling and she rolled for like an hour and a half. Wow. And I, I, I was not. She was, was a playing, hero that day. I was playing with like hundreds of dollars. Like right. Three or four hundred. Yeah. Um, and I think I made, walked away that day with like three thousand. Ten I, times, baby. Yeah, I was like, I love. Ten X, man. I love crafts. <laughs> um, That's why everybody asks me, what game do you like to play? The one I win. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you got, you got to get a good roller out there. If yeah. you don't. Oh, it's brutal. Yeah. It's brutal. Yeah. You, do you have rules when you go, though? Do you sit down and say, you know, let's just say you got $2,000 that you, you know, you're going to play. You, you mentioned you'll go to Black, uh, Blackjack Table 2000. You know, is there a point where you say, okay, if I lose X amount of hands, I'm out? Or is it a dollar value? I mean, or is it just kind of a feel? Uh, it's, it's a feel for me. Yeah. Uh, one thing I've learned with Blackjack is, I used to be that one that sits down and you're losing. You're like, I can ride this out. And yeah. I've learned now with blackjack. No, if you're if you're losing, that dealer's hot. Get up and walk to another table. Right. Go try another table. Right. Yeah, you gotta have a system, man. Oh, That's yeah. the one thing people yeah. don't realize. Um, yeah, you go have fun. You can go have fun. You sit and have fun. Don't expect to win. Yeah. You know, you may win, but don't expect to win. Yeah, and, and I mean, <laughs> you, you can't go to a casino like, oh, I'm gonna go make some money. Yeah. No, well, you just, can. You well, can. That's my goal. When I go, I want to well, go to make some money. You, you but want you, to. But, you, but I change. I have, I have strategies, and I change that. Sure. You know sure. what I mean? If I'm going with, you know, with, with somebody else and some friends and having a good time, it's a different vibe. But, you know. And that's how I tend to play these days is just sit down and have a good time. If yeah. I win, great. If I don't, I'm not losing. I'm not losing the farm. That's a, that's the right thing. Is that hard now, knowing too that you know you got this big lump of you know some money, you know, sitting in there, and now all of a sudden you have the ability where you can play more, you know, where you used to play a hundred, now you could go to thousands, now you can, you know what I mean? Is I, I don't oddly see oddly I don't. Yeah, God bless you, man. That's good. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. So you use your money to make more money, like you should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's huge. I can't tell you how many. I mean, think about this and be, and be realistic because you you know more than I do. But how many times do people uh, actually win big big amounts of money and they blow it all? They oh. and then when I say blow it, I mean they give it right back yeah. in the same game yeah. type of game that they're playing. They're chasing like they just want, even if it's just a hundred grand, you want a hundred grand, but now you enter, you know, six, seven, eight more tournaments, you know, 2,500, yeah. five grand. And before you know it, your hundred grand's gone, yeah, you know, yeah. because you wanted to feel that again, that rush again, right? Exactly, yeah. And I've, I've heard so many stories, similar stories. A lot of the guys, like especially professional poker players, if, if you read up on them, these guys have been up, down, up again, right. dead broke. Now they're millionaires again. It's it's a roller coaster, man. If that's, it's a rough life. Mm -hmm. um, if if your goal is to, and I've got a family, so yeah. I've got I've got a wife, two kids. My goal is to get the kids in and out of college and, and retire right. and, and, and all that good stuff. But if you're living the Vegas life, like a lot of these poker pros and these professional gamblers do, right. this is normal for them. It's every day. Yeah, it's yeah. normal. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's not my thing. I can't do it. Yeah. That's, that's probably why I would never be a professional poker player. Um, mm. Just because I, I, I enjoy it for the... Um, Again, for the camaraderie, the game. But if I had to like make a living on it, then mm -hmm. it wouldn't be fun to me. You never really thought about that, though, especially after, after going as deep as you did. You never sat and said, you know what? In the next three months, I wouldn't mind just playing poker every day. And I could do it. I could do it. Yeah. I had the funds. I could yeah. do it. I mean, come on. Let's be real. 
Yeah. And, and probably the, 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 the blessing there is because of my family, like I have young kids. Like if I had no kids, then maybe. <laughs> if I had no kids. But I think them kids, maybe, right? Maybe, <laughs> maybe my wife and I may be living in Vegas. Right <laughs> um, but with the kids, I mean, you, you got to be grounded and I want to be there. I mean, they play sports and they're in school, so. Uh-huh can't do all that right so right. i've got the i've got the tournament once a year that's that's my thing that's poker your, once a week that's your thing that's good well you know what seeing how poker is your thing i do want to play one hand because i am kind of curious okay <laughs> so i'm just gonna we're gonna just play one hand real quick all right and let's just say these are i don't know maybe a hundred thousand a piece you know on these <laughs> cards and i'm kind of curious you know how you would play it i'm gonna bet 50k all right i'm gonna raise it up you're gonna raise me just a little and i'm gonna call it i'm gonna call so let's go with the flap hmm your call better check to you oh wait uh, it's to me yeah i've got the button you got the button so i have to think let me look at my cheat sheet can i look at my cheat sheet <laughs> you don't you don't mind me looking at the cheat sheet right no i got no. i gotta look at my cheat sheet here and see hmm let's see what am i gonna do hmm hmm i'll check All right. He's all in. I'm going to call. <laughs> Flip, George. King, queen. <laughs> Seven, ten. What are you thinking now? Does this hand look familiar to you? Is this reg- very, is it bringing back familiar. flashbacks? Is very it bringing back flashbacks? Let's, let's see what the you turn know, is. Let's see what the turn is. <laughs> oh, it's a king. Now what's going to happen? What's going to happen? You're already all in. Here it is. Bam. Oh. And he takes the championship. <laughs> That's actually your hand, man. That's the hand that took you down. But, you know, do you have any regrets the way you played it? I don't. I don't. Um, I mean, I could have played it a little differently, but. I guess the only regret is that I lost, but I I would not have put him on two pair. Yeah. So when that king came on the turn, you felt good. Yeah. I yeah. Felt good. You felt good. Well, keep this in is, mind. This is actually the hand I went out with this year too. You had the same hand this year. Yeah. All yeah. right. So listen, Wham Bam forbid you ever to play the king queen <laughs> ever again off suit. I've, I've already gotten rid of it. <laughs> I forbid that I've, from, from I've moving forward. I've already scratched that. So yeah, you don't have to worry about that. That's good. Well, listen, man. Thanks again for being here. You know, it's been an awesome time talking to you. You're a great Absolutely. humble guy. Listen, this couldn't happen to a better person, man. I'm so I thankful. If somebody could could get the only thing I can say, I regret, I regret that you didn't win it. Also, but you know what? I got a good feeling over the next 20 years you might be back at that winner's table you know and i'm excited about seeing it and 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 stuff anything you want to say to the viewers viewers out there people that you know want to get into poker people that play poker you know anything you want to say to them right now at all um no other than poker is a great game um enjoy it soak it up um and definitely play within your means there you have it there you have it folks and that's it man we're gonna wrap it up as he stated george holmes okay yes world series of poker go ahead google him, man he's all over the internet he's a he's a he's a hometown hero and you know what like he said play within your means okay play within your means and remember as wham bam always tells you if your life was a movie would it be worth watching and if the answer is no then stop being ordinary and start being extraordinary And you know what? Stay positive as always and keep testing negative. This is your boy Wham Bam. Till next Wednesday, I'm out.
This broadcast was brought to you by Cost Plus Processing, the leader in merchant processing. Please call 1-855-391-9190 and find out why they are the future in merchant services.